Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Greetings and welcome to the International Congress of, of uh, Electrical, Electronic, and Computer Science. I have the pleasure to present you today, Friday, October 23. The session entitled Bio 6 Biomedical Engineering, Biometrics, Image Processing, and Classification. Today at 12.45, I would like to introduce the first speaker with a paper entitled Deep Neural Network Evo Evaluation Promotion Recognition Through Facial Expression Analysis, whose speaker is Juan Alberto Ramirez Quintana. I must uh, record. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, of course. The authors are Nirvana Sinera and Amparo Ortega, Juan Alberto Ramirez Quintana, who is the speaker, Mario Ignacio Chacón Munguia, and Alma Delia Corral Sides. I must recall that the presentation has uh, 20 uh, minutes for presentation plus 10 minutes for questions. Please go on. Is that ready? No. Juan Alberto, can you listen us? Hello, Juan Alberto. At the chat. Necesitamos activar el audio, pero tiene privilegios. Él puede hacerlo. <risa> Thank you. Uh, do you hear me? Do you listen to me? Do you listen to me? Do you listen to me? Yes, we can keep you. Can you start your presentation, please? Yes, I start the presentation. Okay, let me. Okay, entire screen. Window. Share. Do you see my presentation? Do you, do you see my presentation? Yeah, yeah, we, can, we can see your presentation. You can start, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Juan Ramirez. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, this work is developed by Nirvana, who is uh, my master's student. Okay, uh, this work is divided into an introduction, data set selection, a deep neural network that we uh, select, the proposed method, and the student conclusions. Okay, introduction. Emotion recognition has recently been a paramount topic because its application in mental health diagnosis, market research, neuromarketing, affective computer, and so on. And one strategy that is very successful in these days for emotion recognition is the use of artificial intelligence through a machine learning, traditional machine learning, or deep learning methods to classify emotional states. Could also include uh, some technology like ray computer interfaces, text analysis, wave processing, and image processing. Uh, but in the case of ray computer interfaces, uh, it's necessary uh, a device that is placed in the head that is uncomfortable sometimes, and many people cannot accept that device. 
text analysis has the problem that if the person have grammar errors, it's not possible to uh, to understand the emotion. Also, uh, voice processing, voice processing when the person uh, speak, there are many. Uh, you can see my slide now. Yeah, we, we can, yeah, we, we can. You can see my slides. Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, voice processing uh, uh, have the problem that uh, can have uh, problems when the person uh, have different personalities or have different cognitive state. For example, that it can be sleep and sleep it, and the and the voice and the tone and the uh, latency can change. Image processing is used to uh, analyze the face the the face expression, but however, uh, however, the problem in voice processing is that person can fake the the emotion. Okay, how? Uh, but in some cases where the person is very concentrated in some task in the jobs in the work, uh, face analysis can be useful for. Uh, emotion recognition, and we uh, focus the research based on that. Uh, in the when we develop machine learning models and deep deep, deep learning models in case of uh, uh, face analysis, expression analysis, the literature report many data set and methods for emotion recognition based on facial expression, and there are many traditional machine learning learning methods such as. Uh, Linear discriminant analysis, Kanye's neighbor, random forest, super vector machine. Another deep learning method based on many convolutional neural networks architectures, long short term memory, or some transformers in recent uh, years. Um, there are many uh, challenges in this area, but the main uh, challenge by now is to you to understand novel. Uh, learning uh, strategies to improve the to improve uh, uh, machine learning task, and then this study uh, try to analyze uh, and to propose a novel method uh, for facial expression analysis based on deep neural network. But in our case, our contribution is try to evaluate some uh, artificial neural networks that are used in uh, with few samples when in the training and uh, using the transfer learning the artificial neural network networks that we uh, select were bgg16 inception b3 restnet15 uh, transformers uh, lctms memories and some hybrid approaches Okay, data sets. Um, we said we use two data sets, Japan, uh, HAFE, which consist, consists of 213 facial expression images from 10 different Japanese women. Uh, the classes are uh, anger, disgust, fear, happiness, neutral, sadness, and surprise. Uh, each image has a resolution of 256. By 256, and the image are in the gray scale. Uh, and we propose another custom data base that was developed in the in Tecnológico de Chihuahua, which consists of 118 facial expression image with 15 different subjects. Uh, this image uh, are divided into 12 image per subject, where Four image per subject have positive expression, four neutral expression, and four with negative expression. Each image is in color format and a resolution of 
1080 by, by, uh, by 1080 pixels. Okay, deep neural networks. For this evaluation, we select the next networks. We select a BGG16, which is which comprise several convolutional layers and two fully connected layers. Uh, also, we select ResNet15, uh, which has uh, uh, 15 layers. Among them, the interesting thing of this network are the residual blocks. Uh, another network that we select in this evaluation is Inception. Uh, you cannot see the, the slide change. Okay, let me fix that. Can you see my, my presentation? Yeah, you can, you can continue, please. Can you see my presentation? Can you see my presentation? Do you yes, listen to you me? Continue, please. Do you listen to me? Can you see my presentation? Yeah, ah, okay. Okay. Inception uh, has a, a several convolutional layers that are composed of different uh, receptive fields that find abstract feature in parallel. The next are long short term memory. Uh, which we combine that with uh, several convolutional layers uh, with the same architecture of GG's, BGG16. The next are transformers uh, based models and a transformer with a BGG16 uh, architecture. Then proposed method. Okay, the proposed method is implemented with a Dell workstation with Intel Xeon CPU uh, and a uh, 3016 uh, G4 RTX GPU. And the method uh, is composed for the input, the processing neural network, and the model evaluation. Uh, the input image has a, has a resolution of, uh, the input is composed of an input image with a resolution of 256 by 256 for half a. And uh, for the custom uh, data set is in color uh, format with the 1080 by, by, by 1080 resolution. The preprocessing cost consists of resizing the image for the appropriate size for according to each net network. For BGG, ResNet, and BGG plus LCTM, the resolution in the preprocessing -pre is 224 by 224 uh, for inception is 299 by 299, 256 by 256 for the transformer uh, base models. Okay. Uh, for cafe, uh, we copy the image uh, three times to generate three channels because the next, the, the deep neural networks has an input of three channels. The data were split into 80% for training and 30% uh, for validation. The, st the stage three is the deep neural network that I mentioned in the, in the last section. Uh, this uh, li this uh, layer has, were um, configured in the next way. All the convolutional and uh, future extraction layer uh, were used uh, with a pre-trained pre way using the IMAGENET data set. And uh, the classification block, uh, we discard the classification block. We use just the convolutional or, of the, uh, or the future extraction layers in BGG ResNet inception. For the rest of the uh, networks, for 
LCTM, we use the protein-net uh, convolutional blocks of BPG-16, and the same for the transformer. And we add uh, some custom layers to, uh, to adapt all models to our specific task of facial expression. Uh, in this case, uh, all the models uh, have one fully connected layer with 255 uh, neurons and another fully connected layer with a softmax activation for classification with seven neurons to half it for the classes of half a data set and two ne neurons for the custom data set. Okay, the last uh, layer is the evaluation, which comprises an Adam optimizer, space category, sparse categorical cross entropy, uh, 100 epochs, and a batch epoch and a batch size of 32. The metrics were precision, recall, FM measures, and so on, and accuracy for this evaluation. Resultant conclusions. Uh, according to all results, we see that in these tables that BGG16 achieved the best result with almost 96% in the validation and 90, 95% in with the first score. And the next met, uh, network with good results um, is BGG16 plus LCTM with 90% in the validation in accuracy. 90% uh, in FS score, but the rest of the methods have a regular then of the networks have regular uh, performance. Uh, and, and according to the table A, A8, 8.8 from the reference tree of our papers, which is a review, uh, BGG 16 model present uh, an acceptable uh, performance uh, that between the methods that use uh, have uh, methods. But now we need to consider that in this case, it is trained with uh, transfer learning and with a few uh, samples. I, in our custom data set, uh, BGG16 uh, use, uh, have a performance of almost 89% uh, in accuracy and 89% in the FA if one score. Uh, the Inception, ResNet, and BGG plus LCTM have regular performance in accuracy and FM measure, and the transformer cannot work uh, uh, correctly. Okay, in conclusion, uh, this paper presents a method for motion recognition based on deep neural network, fashion expression image, and transfer learning. Uh, we select uh, BGG16, Inception, B3, ResNet, LCTM, and transform based model to train those network with CAFE and custom data set. BGG16 uh, outperformed the other neural networks on both data set, which is because the number of parameters in comparison with the abstract feature that uh, facial expression have in the task of uh, emotion recognition have a correct equilibrium. Because we see that in with other models like ResNet or other more deep models, we have problems that the fit the uh, the layers find a relevant feature that was not useful for the task of emotion recognition, and has future world work we want to develop a, maybe another neural network for emotion classification task based on the architecture of VGG16 or hybrid model based on VGG16. Thanks for your attention. I apologize for the technical errors in this presentation. Sorry, I can't hear you. We have just five minutes for questions. If anybody wants to propose any observation or question. I can hear, I can Please. listen to you. Maybe you are very far from oh, the microphone. Okay, I will take the lead. Can you hear me properly, Juan? Uh, can you be more near for the microphone? Because I can hear you a quick. Hear me well? Ah, okay, I listen. I listen to you. I can listen to you. If could you recall, please, the motivation of, of uh, classification for facial uh, uh, recognition, I mean, what's the final purpose? Is it applicative or is it just a, a study for a, 
know what is the better performance between different studies between machine learning or deep learning. Okay, now uh, the main uh, motivation of this uh, work uh, was try to develop a novel, uh, an evaluation to propose a novel, mo a novel model has future work. But what is the sense of this work is try to work with transfer learning and with few samples. For example, uh, the table 8.8 .8 of the review that uh, I mentioned in the presentation, uh, present many works based on that were trained with Hafe and another big data sets. And we try to use uh, the essence of transfer learning to trade with few samples, uh, the, the networks, and to achieve uh, a very gen a good generalization result that in our case was VGG16. And the next step is to develop a, a novel model based on these experiments. Do you have any questions? Yes, I have a question. Uh, how do you work? Uh, can you listen to me, Juan? Yes, I can listen to you. So the question is, how do you work with one uh, variable that is mainly subjective, like the, like the emotions? How do you validate this work Okay, uh, both that data set have their annotated mask or the ground truth. Half a is separate their images in seven categories, and our custom data set uh, was separated according to an instrument called SAM, which is a instrument for the psychologist to understand what is the emotion that the person feels in some task. Okay, so the, the person is not the one who is telling you What's the emotion he's feeling? Not directly. We find the emotion through the result of the SAM uh, questionnaire. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we have a space for one last question. Is anybody interested? No? Okay, uh, what, can you please um, recall about your methods? You mentioned about hybrid approaches. Yes. Uh, sorry, the microphone is silence. What silence? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, you talk about the several uh, uh, methods you apply, and at the end you mentioned hybrid approaches. What kind of approaches yes. was uh, applied? Uh, okay, the hybrid approaches were. Uh, LCTM with VGG convolutional layers and the transformer base network with the VGG 16 convolutional layer. And uh, our interest is to know how to work, for example, LCTM, that this is a network that has a memory that traditionally works in for the time analysis. And the main objective to use the VGG 16 uh, layers is to analyze the space, not the time. In the case of the transformer, it's because the more successful networks that use transformers regularly are a combination between a transformer with a, a convolutional layers. Because if we use only transformers, you can develop a very, very big and complex uh, network. Thank you much, Juan. Thank you. We continue with the next presenter, please. The next uh, paper entitled Comparative Analysis of Clash and Boyle for Enhanced Mammogram Contract in Tumor Detection, whose author are Mayra Adriana Leon Sanchez, Yasmin Mariela Hernandez Rodriguez, Oscar Eduardo Cigarroa Mayorga, and Rafael Bayer Mancilla. Please, Mayra, you are the speaker. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am Mena, and I'm going to talk about the comparative analysis of client and body for each mammogram contrast in tumor detection.
Well, uh, first, the, the breast cancer prevalence is the most common cancer in the woman with 2.3 million of new cases reported in 2020. So, the diseases with this uh, cancer is 670,000 in all the world. This studies focus for comparing two processing uh, methods that is co-embodied to find the one of the best highlight features relevant in breast cancer detection. Hmm. Well, methods. Well, my data set is about the two hospitals, the Hanoi Medical University Hospital and the AMS Hospital 108, explained in 2018 and 2020. Yeah, all the data set has 50,000 of mammographies, but we choose only 928 images. The hope of this image is for BRAS1 that, that have a healthy tissues, and the other half is BRAS4 and BRAS5. This one has mazes of mine or many. Well, the COE is a contrast in the adaptive histone equalization. That is the effective technique to, for this purpose. And this technique, you know, we, we divide the images in types. So we have applicate the adaptive equalization of the histone in each type that is the point two. And we obtain the histone equalization in the number three. Well, the benefit of this uh, method is that we have the details of the mammography so much in um, contrast and we um, and with the clip limit we reduce the noise in the image. And about it. This is a pilot of Indoris lookup table and is a technique used more in the images than in the decom images. Uh, well, in this part of the corrected gamma, it has used that pixel per pixel in the intensity. We define the range that clearly and improve the visibility of the crystal part. Um, well, we choose this parameter. First, we interview two seven faculty doctors, and two of these are specialists in London. We present different cases of client and bullet parameters, like is for purple. Per four pixels, eight per eight, and sixteen per sixteen. And the good limit in, in interval values of five per five, point five per five. And the gamma correction for value in the range of point five to one point five. So the doctor said that these parameters are the best for today. To have a better practice. Well, um, after we after we processing the images, we get the GLCM um, characteristics. We choose um, the distance of pixels in one, two, and three pixels, and the degree in zero per five. 90 and 135. So we normalize all the characteristics to prevent any features for the the learning process. We capture the text of the features as contrast, contrast, dissimilarity, homogeneity, energy, and power. Then we put it on the SVM to test the conditions. We use this to classification. And do this twice because we need to compare the results of high versus values. We put 
So only two cases, healthy cases and cases with uh, mazes. And we, we uh, the kernels and keep faults cross validation. We use two these two performs uh, to evaluate the metrics. Well, our results. In this image, we can see that the histogram in Cly is, and the concept in this image is so bad, it's better than the violet image. Because the Cly provides a more normalized pixel in density distribution compared to violet. Uh, and this is the GLCM metric that shows the difference in textual textures between the cases that have healthy tissues and the uh, tumor tissues. The color for these images not cancer tissue appears more uniform with over intensity variation. And it's similar to normal, but in this the textures of non-cancerous tissues are great tissues. The part is there in hypothesis of textural difference. Well, these are our classification performance that show that Clyde have a 57% of precision and will have 55% of the precision. We got so low values for this because we put all the images in different um, densities. So, mm -hmm. The doctors told us that we used to put this um entering the intelligence the artificial artificial intelligence with only densities A and B because the densities D and C have a lot of noise and it felt impossible with another um, study to tell if they have masses or another anomaly. Well, the client have to predict so much better the actual negative and the actual positive. And uh, well, the results. Um, we have the small meaningful difference in 0.02 and 0.03 in scores. So the significant mental images this will okay. improve to reduce the risk of new technologies. Yeah. And our conclusions is and that the clay is so much better uh, than boil to reduce the misrepresentation making speed better shows to investigate both positive and negative cases to entrain an artificial intelligence. The importance of the importance of this study is improving accuracy in memory and classification to reduce diagnostic errors. That is crucial for early and value risk cancer detection. So in Peter's work, we plan to include spread various GLCM distance and added another classification methods. And that's all. Thank you very much, Mayra. We still have five more uh, minutes to propose some questions. Is anyone? Yes, please. Can you go to frame five, please? What? To frame five, please. Oh, five. the number five, please. Where are these hospitals? Uh, well, the hospital 108 is for the youth in Mexico, and the Hanai Medical University Hospital is in USA. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. And there's another question. Of course. Um, you say that the, in the result you you show that there is no there is not enough precision between the both the studies. You almost have sixty percent or fifty percent of yeah. precision. So, how can you improve 
is resolved because you say that the main problem is the presence of noise, right? Yeah, that's because we put all the images that we have density A, B, C, and D. So the density C and D have so many noise. It's like you see um, like a cloudy day and you can see everything about the tumors in the density D. So the doctors told me that we have to improve this to train um, the SDM with only densities A and B. So in the phase two of the study, we train this and we have uh, no results. So it's for the next Thank you. Thank you. Uh, some more questions? No, okay, I will propose those two very brief questions, Mayra. Please, can you recall again, what's the final goal of your study? What do you want to demonstrate? Well, we want to demonstrate that one of these methods of uh, processing images is better to use to entrain an intelligence, an artificial intelligence. So we have to, um, let's err to the diagnostic. Okay, you made a, a study between a difference of contrast between plaque and volume. Mm -hmm. uh, a study, as I, I understand, but uh, at the end, did you train any artificial intelligence? No, we need to prove that what method is better to entrain in future words, yeah. the artificial intelligence to do a technique. It's like, um, mm -hmm. It's like if we got a better preprocessing images with Clyde, for example, we reduce all the errors that we have because Boyle only um, magnifies a um, few regions like this, for example. In this part, Boyle don't, um, don't let us see, for example, the nipple of the Spectral muscles, but in the clay, yes, and we need to see this. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you very much, Mara. We are on time. Thanks. Once again. Then we will move on for the next paper entitled "Evolution of Segmentation Quality in Magnetic Resonance Stimulus Using Singular Value Decomposition: A Feasibility Study." Us. Um, whose authors are Donaldo Francisco Vega Lagunas, Arturo Vegas Olivares, Enrique Chonquero, Hector Cervantes Culebro, Carlos Cruz Villar, Laura Curiel, and Samuel Pichardo, whose presenter is Francisco. Please, uh, please. Oh. Uh, Hi, everyone. I will present uh, the evaluation of segmentation quality in magnetic resonance images using singular value decomposition. Uh, all of this is a feasibility study. In the agenda, for, uh, we will address the introduction, uh, the methodology of the research, the results, and finally the conclusions obtained from this work. Uh, first, we need to start with the introduction. Um, Starting with some brief concepts that we need to address first. Uh, the first one is HIFU. Uh, HIFU stands for High Intensity Focus Ultrasound. This uh, technique is a medical procedure that concentrates uh, ultrasound waves to generate heat and destroy uh, tissue, causing coagulative necrosis. Uh, and here in figure one, we can see uh, a uh, basic diagram of the component of the elements of the hypotherapy. Uh, the other uh, important concept that we need to address is the MRI of magnet or magnetic resonance image that uh, it provides the precise uh, image uh, localization for therapy to, to have real-time uh, uh, image uh, and precise adjustment. Uh, 
what those two concept uh, when those two con two concept uh, merge into one we know that as a magnetic resonance guided high intensity focus ultrasound which is the basis from the work uh, uh, we we have made here Other important thing to address is the uh, IMAX segmentation. This uh, concept is important uh, because the IMAX the segmentation provides uh, what we need to uh, categorize the uh, region of interest from an image obtained from those two uh, elements of the therapy, especially from the magnetic resonance image. Uh, therefore, uh, then we need to we need to evaluate those uh, segmentation results. But uh, this uh, evaluation is sometimes uh, harmful because uh, the lack of consensus of the evaluation metrics used for this uh, task. Uh, so for, th for this uh, task of evaluating the IMAX segmentation, we have two, uh, two forms of evaluation uh, that are classified uh, uh, in, in two, in, that are classified in two. Uh, the first one is the supervised method which relies only on expert expert base uh, when an expert created uh, ground truth. Uh, this means that um, the uh, expert uh, in the in the field is tasked with creating a ground truth from the magnetic resonant image or whatever image like computational uh, computational tomography or whatever. And uh, thus improving accuracy, but this uh, being manually made uh, can affect uh, scalability. Uh, and the other one is the super unsupervised method, which are more uh, suitable for real time segmentation, but uh, sometimes lack of the precise uh, boundary that, that provide the expert created ground fields. So, in the first category, which are the supervised ones, we have the full reference metric overview. Uh, this, uh, in this uh, in this category, uh, we encounter some uh, common metrics used in the evaluation of segmentation, like a uh, dice coefficient, also known as F1 score, or the Jacquard, uh, the Jacquard index. Uh, these two metrics. Uh, measure pixel-wise correlations between uh, uh, well, between an image and uh, an, another, but they ignore completely the discrepancy uh, locations, uh, which can allow mismatch uh, regions to have the same exact value uh, on on evaluation, therefore affecting the objectivity of the evaluation. Uh, and also, for in full reference metrics, we have uh, another kind of uh, metrics known as the distance base, in which the more relevant is the house of distance that measures the boundary uh, discrepancies, but this uh, analogously, analogously uh, ignore the pixel matches like the dice or jacker coefficients. So what the evolution alternative that, that is proposed uh, to use the singular value decomposition to analyze the intensity difference between uh, the reference image and the and the segmented one. Uh, what are the advantages of using SVD? Uh, well, the SVD information uh, retains the full image structure since it's a full image decomposition of the original uh, source, and uh, the pixel distribution uh, is preserved. Uh, this is all, can also be useful for structural comparison. Uh, in further one-to-one uh, -one image comparison. And uh, there's its applications for real-time uh, evaluation. Uh, since the SVD is being made, uh, uh, is being decomposed uh, from the image obtained, uh, has, it has, it could have a potential for real-time application in large-scale image and uh, where, where is the, to further validate with uh, bigger image uh, scales and bigger data sets. Uh, what are the additional capabilities? Uh, this include a singular, 
from the singular value decomposition, we can have a singular value, singular value and singular vectors. A singular vector uh, can address a spatial related limitation uh, in the existing matrix, and to compare the singular values uh, can uh, can make a comparison in the measured segmentation discrepancy between the image intensities of both image both images. So what's the methodology in, in the work? Uh, we start uh, with the magnetic resonance guided uh, high intensity focus ultrasound. Uh, conduct the, the experiment was conducted on Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada, and it involves uh, 55 uh, bulb uh, mice, white mice, that uh, were uh, positioned in this uh, experimental setup that followed the Lakehead University protocol for uh, animal safety and, and treatment. In the image, uh, we see the magnetic resonant image coil that provides the, the final image of the target, uh, uh, a subject mouse with, uh, in, in yellow, uh, the targeted tissue, and the focus ultrasound beam uh, and the transducer, which stands for the high, the high, full, the high full part of the experiment. From this uh, experimental setup, uh, a set of image, uh, a set of images uh, are obtained uh, in which uh, five regions of interest are visible, uh, being the air, gel pad, tissue, transducer, and water. Uh, the tissue is uh, indicated with the letter C, and it's the the more important part of the of the experiment since it's all about uh, oh. treatment. Uh, in the left Im image, we can see a transversal view, and in the right, we can see a sagittal uh, view of the same image uh, obtained by the uh, from the experimental setup. Uh, 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 after obtaining the image uh, uh, from the magnetic resonance uh, image, we uh, we have an image set of. Uh, 112 transverse and 112 sagittal images that needs to be segmented. Uh, the segmentation algorithm uh, used for this task was the watershed with markers and the evaluation tool uh, used in this stage of the of the work was the uh, F measure, also known as the dice coefficient. And uh, in the image, uh, now we see the five uh, segmented region of interest from the previous image uh, shown. Now, the, to make the actual evaluation of this uh, segmentation, uh, first, uh, we, uh, the, the, the image are converted to binary mask that, that can be compared uh, one to one. Uh, this uh, equation show uh, a basic, uh, 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 well, um, so in, in the two image, uh, it's important to place uh, the two parts of the image without the region of interest, which can be the five uh, region mentioned uh, earlier, or and the background, which uh, is all the negative uh, part that we don't want to, to analyze in the image. Uh, here, uh, uh, indicated by a, uh, yes, a zero or in, in color by a color black. Uh, in the left uh, is the ground truth, which was manually uh, traced by an expert. And in the right is the segmentation result of using watershed segmentation algorithm for the tissue region. With this information, the confusion, uh, confusion matrix is made uh, in which the cardinalities uh, me measure the agreement between the expected uh, and the uh, actual classification, uh, ground truth and watershed segmentation. Uh, we have four cardinalities, and these cardinalities ca uh, are visible in the metric calculations for uh, the most used uh, metrics in the, in the field for evaluating uh, images, uh, like accuracy, uh, Matrix correlation coefficient, uh, dice coefficient, 
Jaffar index uh, uh, between others. So with, with all of, of this, uh, we integrate the singular value of the composition, which is the actual uh, proposed uh, for evaluating images. The singular value of the composition uh, may, uh, makes uh, three matrices from the original matrix A, which is the which will be the image to be analyzed. And the, uh, the results are uh, uh, three matrices, which uh, are the matri matri matrix U, which are the row transformations, uh, sigma matrix, which are the scaling factors, and the B matrix, which is, are the column transformations. And uh, all the, we can also focus in the sigma matrix with uh, half uh, sigmas that are ranked in descendant order that will uh, address the intensity of this uh, characteristic in the image. Uh, with those intensities being uh, obtained from the decomposition, uh, now we need a form to, to concentrate this information into um, a metric evaluation. Therefore, the forbidden node uh, provides a measure, uh, uh, provides a form to measure difference using uh, the sigma values uh, or the singular values. Uh, this problem is now captured the energy and structural variation uh, overall of the images. And then uh, the proposed matrix is the SF, which calcula calculates the absolute difference between these preventive norms uh, that can uh, that provide an idea of the uh, intensity energy and the structural variations of both images. Well, the results, uh, well, uh, applying SF value uh, alongside with the, uh, with, uh, uh, with the common metrics used, like the dice coefficient and the Jacquard index for transfer and sagittal image across all the regions, uh, we have that uh, mean values uh, are, are from located from 0 0.93 to 2.53 uh, uh, in the transfer uh, view, in the transversal view, and in the sagittal view are from uh, 1.58 to 4.05 uh, and 6.71. This means that the final metric is not a uh, the boundaries of the final metric are not uh, between zero and one, like traditional metric, but therefore are more uh, uh, are more related to distance-based metrics, which uh, measure the uh, overall discrepancy between two images. Uh, now, uh, for individual regions, uh, the most important thing to to observe is that uh, the a Pearson a pairwise Pearson correlation. Uh, matrix was made uh, uh, where SF was compared uh, against all the 16 traditional metrics, and we can we obtain some relevant uh, correlations. Uh, the most relevant being the the positive high positive correlation of SF metric uh, based on the SVD value uh, with the global consistency error. Uh, in which the correlation uh, for air path, head, uh, air region, head path, and transducer are uh, are, uh, are high, uh, about 0. 0. 0.70 uh, to 0. 0.90 in these three regions. And in the water region, uh, also a great correlation of 0. 0.93 and 0. 0.94, uh, and the tissue, finally, the tissue region. From 0 0.85 A87 to 0 0.91 uh, correlation with global consistency error for these regions. Uh, this correlation uh, can be seen in the correlation matrix uh, made for all the transversal and sagittal scores, but this uh, showcases only the correlation matrix for the transversal score of uh, the tissue. Uh, the intersection of GCC and S shows the 0 0.87 mention of correlation. And uh, in sagittal score, uh, there's the same correlation, positive correlation, now with 0 0.91 value. 
One of the conclusions to use the SF proposal is the strong correlations with the global consistency error are uh, range from 0 0.66 uh, to the lowest and 0 0.94 to the highest uh, across all the five different regions. Uh, the last two regions showcases high values like the transducer or water due to the overall size of the region. Uh, meanwhile, the help up uh, being the most precise uh, object to be identified ranks uh, 0.02 to 0.91 in correlation to the global consistency error, which is a metric that uses all the five cardinal, all the four cardinalities to make uh, an assumption of the of the quality of the segmentation. Uh, what are the advantages? Well, SF captures the structural similarities between the, the image segmentation and the ground truth reference by considering this image distribution as a whole and the internal variation, uh, internal variation of, the val of the values uh, obtained by the, by the, 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 the composer. Unlike the overall uh, base metrics, overlap base metric that measure pixel wise correlation. And a future work will need to incorporate the singular vector, which contain the information uh, of the spatial discrepancies, to enhance the usability uh, and add it, uh, that structural pattern location that lacks uh, the full reference uh, metrics that are uh, discussed earlier. That's good to know. Thank you very much, Francisco. Well, I must apologize, apologize, apologize with you with the room is not the best day for being a chairman with a bad suit. So this is my field. So sorry. Is there any question for both? Anyone? I have Please. one question. Please. Which, what's your name, sir? Francisco. Francisco. Francisco, I have a question. Uh, can you repeat or maybe tell us the, the reason why did you use the SBD is the method? Um, but can you repeat you know, the, the main reason to use that? Yeah, the, the main reason to use SBD is because the internal information gathered uh, in, in this, this composition. Uh, we are talking about the taking the original image and all the internal information uh, provided by this decomposed is uh, retained to be used in a comparison between images. The, the reason of using this is the whole information. The advantage of using this whole information is that it overcomes the problems of the uh, overlap metrics that are pixel-wise uh, comparisons or uh, distance-based metrics that are uh, boundary comparisons. So in this uh, range of metrics, there are uh, sometimes uh, there, there will be cases in which um, a numeric value obtained by these metrics uh, will be the same, uh, given the different uh, variation of the two image, but this would not uh, um, showcase the, uh, the real difference between an image or another, which can have a more uh, uh, located a uh, discrepancy between two images that therefore have a different medical outcome than a more um, uh, not uh, not located, not so located. Yeah. Are you trying to compare two structures or maybe the information inside of those structures? Uh, in first case, the two structures, which are the region of interest, uh, and why are not you using uh, structural indices comparison like SSIM? Have you ever heard about yeah. SSIM? And uh, why did you, uh, you didn't use that? The, the goal of the, the feasibility study is to to see uh, what, what, what were the, the form to use these singular values in first uh, in the first attempt to uh, provide a, a 
uh, a similar way to evaluate the image from using the standard evaluation method. Okay. I say this because uh, I think SBD um, reduced the, the, the dimensionality of the problem. So we are trying to compare two images in two dimensions. When you apply SBD, you are making this problem in one dimension. So I don't understand very well why, why are you trying maybe to 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 solve a problem in one dimension when there is a, uh, another methods okay. that you can use in, in matrix or in images that are in two dimensions like the SSM comparison index yeah well uh, the goal uh, the primary goal was to make uh, some uh, the metric as comparable as possible with the with the use metric to uh, measure how well the this uh, dimensionality reduction can uh, obtain the important information that okay. I would need to evaluate the image. Uh, another uh, another form to see it is that uh, the image comparison relies uh, well on on visual comparison. So. Uh, it's it would it would be interesting to have a fully uh, uh, numeric comparison from the internal uh, information that can be uh, stay used to evaluate the, these those images. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. We are just in time for continuing your program. Thank you very much, Francisco. Thank you. The next paper is entitled. Exploring reproducibility of MRI, MRI analysis using SPM and Miller open source tool. Those authors are Hector Gerardo Martínez Puentes, Mario Ibrahim Gutiérrez, Jorge Airi Mercado Gutiérrez, and Botifina Gutiérrez Martínez. Please go on, Gerardo. Thank you. Well, hi, hi everyone. My name is Gerardo Martinez. I am a biomedical physicist from NAM. And in with collaboration of Institute Nacional de Rehabilitación, uh, we are presenting the following work title: Exploring Reproducibility of FMRI Analysis Using SPM and Nilearn Open Source Tools. Let's begin. Well, this is the content of the presentation. And first, I need to talk about what is Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, fMRI. fMRI is a technique that takes advantage of the magnetic properties of the oxymoglobin and desoxymoglobin. It allows us to see the brain activation in response to different stimuli. Um, because the brain neurons will consume the oxygen from oxymoglobin and will produce this oxymoglobin, and this will generate a measurable signal um, through resonance magnetic, magnetic imaging, and specifically using T2 bulk weighting. And this signal is known as block oxygen level dependent bulk. When this bulk signal changes over time, it is known as the hemodynamic response function. Ideally, this response is expected as shown in figure two. We apply uh, a stimulus to one person and approximately four to six seconds uh, later, uh, this volt signal will reach the max peak. And later, uh, uh, the, the volt signal will reach the baseline. This is important to consider for our uh, experimental designs and for and for our analysis. Well, now I need to talk, I need to talk about preprocessing. We need to apply apply this to our functional volumes to reduce the noise and correct artifacts. There are some uh, common steps in fMRI. For example, the slice timing that correct the time acquisition 
between the, the slices of a bottom. Uh, we have the borrow filtering. We have realignment that align all the functional volumes. We have uh, co-registration that align the functional volumes and the anatomical volumes. Uh, we have smoothing that applies a 3D Gaussian filter. Normalization that start standardizes the volumes to a common space and segmentation that divides the brain, the, the brain in different tissue types. All these steps are very important to perform a general linear model. This tool at all allowed us to, to see the brain activation. Now, there are uh, various, various softwares to do these steps. For example, SPM, FSL, ADNI, the parts are, but there are some reproducibility issues one of them is lack of access to software. For example, uh, the parse is a tool available in MATLAB, and MATLAB is not open source. Other point is the absence of a framework for developing comparative algorithms. Other is the island curve for new users. And for the last, we have intrinsically described processing methodologies. And this is a, a, a very important point because we need to take care or in or in or steps of preprocessing or analysis. A little change in a configuration can lead uh, can lead different results. And um, in this sense, there is a alternative. Uh, is there is Nipipe, a Python library. This uh, tool allowed us to integrate all these. Uh, all these tools like SPN, FSL, in only one place. Also, uh, we can create a single workflow that allowed us to, to improve this description of the methodology. Well, so our object, objective is, is uh, to, do, to perform an analysis using SPN, and Linear the the is our library that allows us to perform these general linear models. So we'll take SPM and Linear, and we will perform a general linear model, and we'll, uh, we will get the brain activation. And we want to see if, the, if, if, if these brain activation are different or not. And with NIPIPE, we only, we, we only Will perform the preprocessing. So we need to uh, first to define our database. We are we are using the Flanker Task dataset. It is a Bible on Open Neuro and consists in twenty six right handed adults. Uh, for each person, there was five minutes per session, and there was two sessions per person. In these sessions, there was two trial types, a congruent trial and incongruent trial. The congruent trial consists in an array of arrows pointing to the same direction, and, and the incongruent trial type consists in one of these arrows uh, pointing to the opposite direction. And also, uh, well, uh, for reprocessing, we select the subject A of this data set, and using NIPI, we generate this pipeline. And we apply a relink, a register, a slice timing, segmentation, organization, smooth, smoothing. And it's important to say that we will use the anatomical volume to put or results of brain activation because uh, anatomical volumes have a higher resolution than functional volumes. Well, now to perform our general linear model, we need additional information. Uh, for example, in the figure six, you can see our definition one and definition two, the response of the, su the subject for the different trials. 
the duration of these trials and the onset of these trials. So with this information, we could, uh, we, we can't uh, create, uh, make, perform <laughs> a or decent matrix. Uh, so we create a, a decent matrix using Miller and SPM using the same parameters. For example, uh, the same hemodynamical response function model or uh, also the same uh, frequency filter and etc. Now, once we uh, get our original linear model, we need to set a contrast. Contrast allow us to uh, create this uh, image of brain activation uh, through, uh, through com comparisons between between a, a, a stimulus, a stimulus, a stimulus. For example, one contrast is incongruent, greater than baseline, other is congruent, greater than baseline, another is congruent, greater than incongruent. And this will generate a statistical map and with, and with a big value of <clears throat> lower than 0 0.01, we can obtain this acti a brain activation. Now, uh, the idea is that we create a mask of SPM and a mask of Nilir, and we apply a subtraction. So if there is some points in the final result, there is an error. So if the masks are equal, are the same, so there is no error. That is what one uh, Want to see? So for results, first, okay. Uh, when we plotting these values of or the scene matrix, like SPM or million, we can see that the values are different, and we can say that at this point, the results will diverge. Will diverge. In this sense. We also importing the SPM, the SPM values to Nilir to perform the general you know, model and the mask. Uh, so, in Figure 11, we can see uh, the, uh, the various, the difference of, of the various contrast that we selected. And the two comparisons, Nilir minus SPM, and SPM with Nilir minus SPM, I mean, uh, we import the data of SPM to Nilir to perform this analysis. So you can see that we obtain a lower error importing the data of SPM to Nilir. Uh, and for the con contrast, the first contrast, uh, this, this this difference is three times lower uh, comparison uh, comparison uh, between the, the importing and not not importing. And uh, in the second contrast is two times lower, and the three, con the three contrast is three times lower. Well, but if we pay attention to one of these these contrasts, for example, the first. Uh, it is, um, it, it is, it has the lower uh, value of density, so it has the lower error. So uh, for this contrast, SPM with Miller and SPM are very similar, very similar. So uh, they, they share the same area for the activation. Okay. But what can we conclude, conclude about this? Well, we can't, we can't uh, say that one software is better than the other. 
But it's true that importing or that or data to Python to me to Miller, we can improve the results. And it is um, it is very 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 good <laughs> because we can apply a complex analysis or, or we can implement a machine learning tools. Also, on the other hand, uh, we 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 need to take care of mixing uh, two uh, different tools for the analysis because uh, we see we say, we say that the, the, the results will uh, diverge. And for the last for future work. We need to, to, to do this same analysis to all the subjects of the data set to improve our results. And that's all from my part. This is the reference. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Arthur. We just have a space for two questions. This is anyone wants to propose. No? Okay, I have some few questions, Hector. Sure. Um, you talk about the uh, use method for, for registration. Do you know what kind of, at the end, the kind of um, method of code registration? Because code registration are a collection of few methods. I don't know, did you use some parameters of suites or for, how did you uh, apply code registration? Sorry. Yeah, uh, when you, Second. <laughs> when you apply the first, the first pass of the link, you generate a, a mean image. When this mean image, the core registration is applied to the volume, uh, the volume, uh, the anatomical volumes. Uh, I don't know very well uh, what kind of, of, of method. It use, but I know that it used the the mean image to do the registration. The mean image produced of reading. Okay, you are talking about image volume. It means you are using volumes or you are using areas. I mean, you are using a two D image or it's a three D image. Oh, three three D image. And uh, see, yeah, um, image is a uh, in two D two D two D dimensions. Uh, two dimensions and the volumes and three dimensions. So. I, I use volumes, but of course, in each volume, there are images. There are books, there are slices. Oh, right. Is it the first time you, um, uh, uh, your college applied for 3D image analysis in anatomical structures? Yes, see, yes, it, it is. I mean, you're being pioneer. Excuse me. You are being pioneer in this kind of studies. Yeah, uh, in Instituto Nacional de Rehabilitación, uh, it, it is the first uh, work to try to, to to resolve this 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 problem. We are uh, beginning to work in fMRI. Thank you very much, Hector. If there is no any more questions. <laughs> Well, let's move on to the to the next paper entitled Implementation of Computer Vision and Image Processing in Techno Religions at the National Institute of Cardiology, Ignacio Chavez, Arenosin Pialtis, whose speaker is Benjamin Eduardo. He's not in the room. Neither, he's not present. Neither um, online. Well, we will move to the last speaker today. Which paper is entitled Machine Learning Based Thickness Estimation of Abdominal Fat and Muscle Using Stimulated Radio Frequency and Scattering Parameters? Please, greetings to Alfredo. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the nice introductions. Uh, my name is Alfredo Boy Satria. Uh, I'm a PhD student from the University of Florida in Spain. Uh, I'm going to present uh, machine learning based fitness estimation of abdominal fat and muscle using simulated radio frequency scanning vectors. Um, I'm going to start by explaining about body compositions. So, body composition is actually a parameter that shows how much fat versus non fat in your body. Um, why is it important? Because, first, uh, it affects your body appearance aesthetically. And second, it shows how much capacity or limitation of your body. And usually body composition consists of three elements. There is fat, and then muscle, and then bone. And for muscle, we know that muscle can dictate our metabolism. Also, it represents the joint health and ensures strong daily activity. And fat, fat has high correlation to CVD or cardiovascular disease, especially the visceral fat, which is located deep inside of your stomach or your abdomen. And then the bone mass, the bone mass uh, represents how strong is your bone and also represents the risk of osteoporosis and infections. So, um, we know that it's important for us. So how can we measure or monitor our body compositions? Current technology, including uh, the image based such as MRI, CT scan, or DXA. There are also some technologies such as higher displacement plates, tomography, and also the hydro densitometry. Um, there are some technology which is quite practical, such as skin fold measurement, and also bioelectric impedance analysis. But currently, the, the golden standard are hydrogen where you have to put your whole body inside a pool of water. So here we can see there is a technological gap between what is the golden standard and what is practical. So therefore, I propose my, my method, namely using radio frequency. Why? Because radio frequency is a major technology. We all now use radio frequency in our daily life. So it can be built into a very affordable technology and very easy to use technology. Um, so what, what's um, to do that, uh, we, ha we have also to make sure that this technology, the RF technology can have a, a very good accuracy. So I am thinking about combining the RF technology in the hardware part and then process it with machine learning in software parts. Um, is there any other research about measuring body composition or fat or any uh, human muscle already? Yeah. There are some research over there that already try to um, use the RF system. This system um, using the microsensor in 6 to 10 gigahertz bands and they got the RMSD of 0 0.8 meters and another one using PDRH antenna with Gaussian pulse in frequency of 1.45 gigahertz and 462 megahertz. Um, and also some other technology like this one is using SRR, singular uh, SRR sensor and also signal those as the parameter. So from this um, research, we see that it is possible to, to use RF and there are a lot of uh, parameters that we can use such as the scattering parameter, or I, I call it uh, S11 here. Uh, it represents the, the reflection and the reflection of electromagnetic of RF signal 
through a material. So in my model, uh, I'm I'm starting with abdomen layer because abdomen abdomen is the most important part of human body, and uh, in abdomen there is the visceral fat which is important to know. And this is my model. It's planar multilayer where in my simulation I put an electromagnetic signal radiator and then some layers start from the skin, subcutaneous fat, the fat under the skin, and then muscle tissue, empty, and then visceral fat, or I say FVT, and then intest intestine or your internal organs. And I make a parametric analysis based on the variation of the thickness, uh, as it is from 0 to 27 millimeter, muscle from 6 to 15 millimeters, and then visceral fat from 0 to 6 millimeter, with the resolution of three millimeter. I made the skin and intestine are fixed at two millimeter and 25 millimeter. All these numbers are based on the possible actual um, thickness of human uh, tissue. And from this parametric, I get 120 data point of S11 uh, scattering or re reflection parameter of radio frequency that I used to, uh, to to, to make the machine learning algorithms. Um, the first thing I do is trying to find the feature. Um, so what frequency I will use. Um, I'm analyzing many frequency. This is some sample of it, like from 200 megahertz, 500, 1 gigahertz, and 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, my finding is, of course, lower frequency means deeper penetrations. So if you use deeper penetration, uh, the electromagnetic will penetrate even more than intestine, but that's not what we are desired. We want to the electromagnetic only penetrate under the intestine and the skin. So that could be a good uh, features for uh, determining the skin, fat, muscles, uh, thickness. Uh, under 300 megahertz, the AM is able to penetrate the intestine. So I choose uh, the lower frequency as 300 megahertz, and at around 2 and 2.5 gigahertz, it penetrating skin. So that's my my upper uh, frequency. So my features will be 300 megahertz, 405, 1 gigahertz, 1.5, and 2, 2 gigahertz as my measurement frequency. And then from those frequency, the scattering parameter, the S11, I I try to find the feature correlations. We see that on lower frequency, there are a strong correlation between 300, 400, and 500. And then when, while we have higher frequency, the correlation become lower. So generally, the bigger the difference of the frequency, the less correlations. And I try to see the correlation between uh, all the issues and the features and we see a very good correlation between SET or subcutaneous fat at 300, 400, and 500 megahertz. And with other, we can see quite uh, a bit low. So this is my machine learning model. I will test 14 machine learning model, a four linear regression model, the general one, lasso, rich, and elastic net. And then four polynomial regression models, general, large average, and elastic net, SVM with four different kernels, GNN, and kernel forest. And there are 63 feature combinations from six scattering parameters. So a total of 882 ML model and feature combination we are tested with 120 data points, which I divide into 80% of training data and 20% of test data. Um, so the results shows that at SAD estimations, I uh, quite get a good error, just 2.56% of error, and RMSE of 0 0.35 millimeter, which is uh, better than previous research. And uh, there are five top models that I present in this table. Uh, most of them are either polynomial regressions or rich polynomial regressions. And uh, the features uh, that, that produce a good result are 300, 400, 500, and 1 gigahertz. 
So I'm trying to find out why at this frequency it performs good. And we can see from here, this is one is from 300. Um, sorry, this one is from 500 when the grass at 1.0 gigahertz. When the frequency get higher, uh, the tendency of the behaviors become less predictable. So we can see here it's more polynomial. That's why polynomial regression performs good. But when we use higher frequency, the, the behavior become less predictable. So that's why at this feature frequency, 300, 400, 500, it's relatively better than other frequency features. And this is also explain why uh, polynomial uh, method performs good because the S11 has a has a behavior like a polynomial function. For empty estimations, the, the, the results quite almost the same with polynomial regression and which polynomial regression are the best method and 300, 400, 500 megahertz and 1 gigahertz S11 are the best combinations. But uh, it has a uh, worse per performance. It's not that bad, but worse for performance than the SED estimations. Uh, I also try to find out what happened with these results. And this is the data of muscle thickness estimations in central frequency. So different with like the subcutaneous fat, which the behavior quite predictable. This one is not at this frequency, the muscle thickness increasing, but at the higher frequency, they have uh, unpredictable behaviors. This one decreasing, this one decreasing and increasing, and something like that. So um, that's why it makes it becomes harder for the system to predict the muscle thickness. And so we can see that uh, the get deeper, it will get uh, difficult to, to predict the, the thickness. And we see the the error in visceral fat estimations is 39%. And the RMSE is only 1.17. The error is bigger because visceral fat, visceral fat is actually the, the thinnest tissue in human abdomen. So it's hard to get a very good error. But still, the RMSE is 1.17 millimeters. Yeah, it's worst performance still. Polynomial regression is the best one. 300 and 400, 500 and 100 is the best combination feature. Is just the same. Um, to see the significance of the met method, I also do the Bunsen Parameter test. And um, on SIP model, there uh, there are two or uh, three model. Model one, two, three is quite significant than two other methods. Uh, they are, as I explained before, are rich polynomial regression with the switcher and polynomial regressions. Um, at muscle thickness estimations, model one quite significant to model four and five, but not to model two and three. On visceral thickness estimation, model one has more significant compared to four and five again, but not significant to two and two. So uh, overall. Order. The bet, the top three model is quite have a, a good performance compared to other models. Uh, my conclusion is as any estimation has good performance, it's RS, RMC is 0 0.35 millimeters is better than 0 0.8 millimeters, which was reported earlier. And these of VR or each VR featuring S11 of 300 megahertz, 400 megahertz, 500 megahertz, and 1 gigahertz frequency is performing well. Um, in my uh, measurement linear regression, SBMK and random forest perform quite bad. And the deeper the tissue, the worse the performance is because the S11 magnitude is smaller is S11 become less valid and also in electromagnetic theory because there are a lot of reflection during the path and the upper tissue are the dominant to the total reflection. So the S11 is affected more by the cutaneous fat and the skin than the visceral fat. So predicting the visceral fat, visceral fat from the S11 is harder. So um, currently there are some improvement that uh, we are uh, testing 
uh, we try more S1 on feature on other frequency. And then we're trying to do parameter spinning for the machine learning model, especially for the model which has a, a bad uh, result. And we're thinking about adding a physical improvement, such as the meta surface layers uh, on top of the human abdomen. And my future work will be the use of human pantheon for the measurement for this usage. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Absaira. Well, I guess we have quite a long time for propose several questions. You, you are very interesting. Uh, I must ask, uh, are you Benjamin? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. So we will just um, uh, attach some questions, just two or three questions, and we continue with you. Yeah, okay. Way. Is there any question for propose? No. Okay. I will go up. Uh, Sorry, you have? Yes, I have that. Uh, sorry, what, what's your name? Alfredo. Alfredo. Um, did you say that you implement SEM for the technology? Yes, because I can see the slide first. Okay, so how do you uh, structure this problem through the SBM? Because I think you can only separate this uh, model in, in like a binary process, right? Or not? I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Again? Yeah. How do you structure this problem into an SBM? Because I think you can only use or separate a problem like in a binary problem through an SBM. Or how do you? How do you structure that the the support vector machine for your for your uh, work? That's a question. Okay. Um. Um. I'm I'm using a Python here, and there are a package for SVM, and I'm using that. Okay. So, um. Yeah, that's. I'm I'm not really. Uh, know about the, the structure of that SVM, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, okay, what what were the, the inputs of the, S, the SVM? I the, see. The signals, the, uh, the RF signals? Yeah. And what what were what were the output? Uh, the output are the thickness of the tissue. So there are three tissue that being observed. Okay. Uh, the subcutaneous fat. Uh, okay. The muscles and the visceral fat. Okay. That that was the, the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Alfredo, I must um, say that abdominal fat thickness, technical instrumentation is is a challenge. No, I, I myself am conducting a, oh, a research okay. for breast segmentation in the pectoral muscle and the a headache. And I also understand the motivation for using RF is a popular method, but I think that big challenge for your research, uh, correct me please if I uh, mistake, uh, um, it's about the frequency in which this energy is just um, applied to the skin. Because at the end, for example, 2.4 gigahertz is exactly the same frequency of a microwave. Yeah. The, and the microwave, what it's using is just shaking the uh, water molecules, oh. and that may be changed the thickness of the fat layers. Oh. Am I mistake? Or possibly that the reason you get different results and when at the end it's still fat thickness is just a challenge. Um, as far as I knew, um, the use of microwave or RF frequency for biomedical application, we usually do um, um, SAR measurement before specific absorption rate because that's the only thing that we think will affect the biomedical body <laughs> and at those frequency um, what I found is it, it is safe to use yes. it is safe to use and also the distribution of heat it doesn't affect the tissue okay. that, yeah that's what from my measurement and SAR measurement uh, get so 
Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the the change of the speaking speak clause of the mic door if you don't see. And if it's about the I, I know some microphone technology can eat some tissue, but there must be some um, scenario to do it. Mm -hmm. And at this measurement, uh, we, we don't do the, the same setup like that. Okay. Yeah. Regarding the set of are you using just antennas or you just that a big So there, there are two options. The first one is the antenna um, has some distance to the abdomen. Um, but to do that, you have to put a meta surface on the abdomen. It's just like a gel on MR, uh, ultrasound. Or yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Or you, you can attach it to the abdomen layer. Um, and you have to design your antenna to have uh, less like dielectric instead of metal. Mm -hmm. So the uh, reflection doesn't uh, too big or too much. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and the antenna design was just monopolar, bipolar? Or... Um, uh, it depends. It depends on what kind of frequency you're going to use. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, mine, I found out that uh, 3, 4, and 500 megahertz. So it's like on 433 megahertz and a bit of white band and one gigahertz, which is close to 900 megahertz. Those are ISM band in, in the United States. So I can use double band and quite double white band. And to do that, I can um, design um, a planar antenna uh, instead of other antenna. So the antenna design is is very dependable on what kind of frequency that I found out very precise in doing the measurement. Okay. At this point, I'm thinking about this planar antenna, like yeah, like patch antenna with different size for compensating different frequency that I'm using. Okay. And just for conclude, I mean, this is an international congress. We just for curious, in which country is developing this? It's a... Oh, most of the RF study for biomedical application usually come from Italy. Mm -hmm. So many researchers from Italy are doing RF for biomedical, but also in United States, we, we do the, the same things okay. like um, and endoscopic capsules, wireless endoscopic capsules, and measurement using RF. We, we do also. I mean, do you came from United States for percent? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, just um, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alfredo. Thank you. Just we will take a break for two minutes for the next speaker to upload him. Thank you. Very much. Simple decade. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's us. And we divide it's one and two because it's between 20 percent for our training. And so, 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 I see the Okay. 
We will continue with the last with the last keynote entitled Implementation of Computer Vision and Image Processing in Technovigilance at the National Institute of Cardiology, Ignacio Chavez, Alenorting via case presented by Benjamin. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Benjamin Adola Aguilarase. I'm the Medical Engineer and my main science doctor is Gerardo Veracruz. Well, first, first of all, I, I'm going to give some background for the National Institute of Cardiology, who was in April 18, 1944, and that it was the first of the kind of its, of its kind of the world. And our institute served as its engine and example for those who were created in several countries as USA, England, Brazil, Russia, and Belgium. Our institute's specialty is medical care and research on cardiologists. Oh, well, with advances in technology, the Institute has implemented temporary technologies for patient care, the implementation of new technologies and tapes, new challenges, advantages, complications, new process, and it's necessary to, to generate mechanisms to warranty the safe use. Well, first of all, what is technovigilance? The NOM 240 of national regulations says that establishes the purpose of technologies to guarantee that medical devices that are available on the market function, function in the manner indicated in accordance with the manufacturer intention of use. And, well, as is indicated in the authorization for funding health information issued by the Minister of Health, and if not, the corresponding action are taken to correct and reduce the probability of recurrence of adverse incidents, thereby seeking to improve the protection of the health and safety users of medical devices. So, first, in turn, well, the vision of technologies and the compatibility with Pan American Health Organization. Uh, currently, in Mexico, we only practice the passive technology, who, uh, which is only the spontaneous and voluntary report. But in the National Cardiology Institute, we're going to take the four aspects of the technology, who are active technology, proactive technology, and intensive technology. Actually, we are taking four, the four, and active technology is the clinical practice, by the way, and proactive is anticipating incidents and risk management, and intensive technologies are the research our technologies and methodologies in the at well, at the institute, fragments of elastomer were reported in size syringe loaded with adenosine and rope. It's used in human cerebral. The phenomenon is known as a coring effect. The coring effect consists of a brace of more fragments of elastomer or glass inside the syringe during the preparation and administration of the intravenous drugs. The causal causes of the coring effect are needle gouge, needle type, puncture angle, and primary patch material. Well, for the methodology, we mm, take three causality and three types of causality was puncture technique, storage condition, analysis, and stomach ease. Well, the storage condition by the service one presents high humidity, lack of thermogrammeter, a lacking of electric energy. However, there is no damage to the packing. And service two and three, the conditions, conditions were compatible with the current standard no material. We want well, we analyze the puncture technique by simple methodology was well, the only a camera of 0.3 megapixels and a distance for 0.23 meter and a resolution for uh, 640 uh, or uh, 415 out oh, in some condition that were uh, related like uh, light from range from 460 and 415 and uh, well we process the image by the camera and MATLAB, or by software MATLAB. So we do a binarization. Well, first of all, we, well, we paint with green light and the syringe and the adenosine bill. Then we do the binarization, the green light extraction, a medium filter, and then I got feeling from this and how transform and a color analysis. 
Well, this is important because we first we want to analyze it by seeing and causing loads, but there's some errors to analyze the angle. So we use the fault transform, and there are four possible cases. First, uh, to zero to 90 degrees, 90 degrees to 180 degrees, and with all the circumference. Only we only analyze the first two, but we the, the algorithm was developed for all quadrants. And then well the this gives us a resolution of one uh, grade and an error for maximum plus minus two grades, accuracy of 98 98 percent uh, and a precision of 95 percent. So this will is useful for our purpose. And also we analyze the primary packaging as, um, as a past case is some similar methodology, but we reduce the distance from the via and the medic and the camera and all the background that's the same. And this was a more simple um, algorithm. It was a binary essential, medium filter, gap filling, edge detection, and difference. We detect the difference between the primary package and analysis of elastron fragment in search because they, well, the fragment were are too small that we can see as with a naked eye. We, that's why we develop a, a, a methodology with computer vision. And well, for this purpose, we have a segmentation. There are mass prediction because we, we didn't process by our UV. We used light in color space. And then a median filter, I got fill, a solid filter, yeah, calculation for the dimensions. And what the results. We can see that as the angle is near to 90 degrees, the hole or the area of the hole is more, is bigger, or is definitely bigger. And the angle is between 45 and 60 degrees is smaller. And also it's uh, important to say that the covering effects only, only presented in service one and the, where the angle and the area are bigger. But, and we have a, a standard elevation and a, of um, 2.7 of the angle. So it would, well, we can say that um, by the Pearson relation, of 0 0.93 that the angle and the function area has a side relationship between if one increase the other increase. So we can see an like, uh, angle puncture of 45 degree and obviously the area detected is so much smaller it is actually 45 pixels and then if we can see the angle of 90 degrees we can see the bigger area of puncture. And well, after all, we analyze, analyze the uh, elastomers inside the syringe. And um, well, why, man, what we do this uh, is because uh, to develop a methodology of quantitative determination of this, because for a clinic and practice, clinical practice is not the same as a research practice. So there are some controversies between medical um, personnel, um, technological personnel, and biomedical engineering personnel. So this uh, methodology led us a quantitative um, way to determine it. Well, when we analyze the fragments of the inside the syringe, we can say that the width is the, the width is the same of the 18 gauges of the syringe needle. So we can say that this is the elastomer inside the VLs are the, are produced by the puncture of the syringe. And but we we detect the of the methodology of the proposal methodology. Uh, by this question, current effect occurs in those puncture perform at angles to 90 degrees, generating a some fragments with a dimension similar to the gauge of the 18 3 you know, Additionally, when an, analyzing the primary packaging, a large perforation area is observed. For preferential mate of 90 degrees, than those at 45 to 60 degrees, which increase the probability of a elastomer entering the area. The exchange caliber is not recommended to use an adenosine via, the, and the manufacturer and current relation recommend to use penny one caliber. According to various authors, the gauges of the nearest factor that contributes to the occurrence of current effect 
Nevertheless, for our study, it doesn't turn out to be the determining factor in the appearance of the coin effect with the pressure angle being the main contributor. Additionally, the methodology used could have the potential to be used in the area of medical and nursing training for the correct puncture of vials and patients. Another field of application in the use of algorithms for measuring lengths and angles in laparoscopy trainers, obtain information for the improvement of medical technique. The use of the robotics in telemedicine has led to the rise of image processing and computer vision for remote assistance for healthcare professionals. Have the potential to be applied for the supervision and monitoring of remote conscious opinions. In conclusion, based on the results obtained and in comparison with previous study, it is recommended to use near gadget greater than 21 gadgets, function angle between 45 and 60 degrees, use of series filters and use pre-filed searing. This recommendation will minimize the appearance of foreign effect. The use of computer vision and image processing technique will be proved to be useful for the application the investigation of cost of technologies. Having as main characteristic low cost, minimum alteration of evidence, objective and quantitative the evidence that allows for better resolution to make clinical efficient, and the institute in order to warranty safety and quality service in non user and patient compatibility with chronic regulation, do that there is not further information regarding the use of these techniques as a tool for technology. We propose their use for evaluation in similar cases. So there are some references. And I will, I want to say that if you're looking for early social research collaborators and undergraduate students, we are active research in prediction of fake medical experimentation using artificial intelligence, tomography images processing for timely detection of stem migration and thrombosis, functional and quality tests based on computer vision, implantable medical devices. Uh, in main areas as data science, image processing, material science, computer vision, as artificial intelligence, and risk management. Okay, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you very much. Just exactly on time, we have just a space for one question. If anyone wants to propose, please. You want to? No? Okay, just I have a few questions about the image processing, about that the Marian filter could not um, compromise some features for the final goal. No, well, it was designed by a matrix of three or four three around the pixel because it's compatibility with the resolution of the camera and we um, take into account mm -hmm. to design the Marian filter because. Probably, we, if you use bigger filter or bigger matrix, we lose what well, we lost some information. Okay. So by this way, we don't lose information, and it mm, gets a better quality mm -hmm. image. And that's why uh, uh, the next step by medium filter is a gut feeling by this uh, sterile process okay. of that um, size of three, no size of two. Okay. Uh, regarding the edge detection, what kind of methods were applied? Edge detection? Well, we mm, canny, so tried so. three. Yeah. That was soil, canny, and the plastic. Um, the best of three was so mm -hmm. because we lost some information with Laplace, and with canny was insufficient to detect all the border. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I would, I would thank uh, everybody in the room. Thank you very much for your attention, for your participation. I once again apologize a little for my illness and have an excellent afternoon, everyone. I hope we see each other next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.